Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for more beauty sleep. Maybe. Today we're building the mistress of all evil, Maleficent. Her backstory was always kind of a mystery until 2014, when Disney let us know that she was a fantasy Kill Bill fairy who was drugged and mutilated by her ex. Wait, Disney made that? What the? How bad can I be? I'm just doing what comes naturally. How bad can I be? can I possibly be? Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to channel our anger into bigger, more dragon-shaped anger. Kind of a long-term goal, but it's a fun one. Next, we'll make some natural walls with thorns and fire. Finally, we'll get a birdie buddy. These are actually in reverse order, funnily enough. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. Wisdom will be number one. You're a wild witch out in the woods, wielding whatever weird spells you want. I actually nailed that first take. I'm really proud. Charisma next. Maleficent is a boss, and you don't crumble a kingdom by being meek. Constitution after that. Your enemy is the whole kingdom of knights and soldiers. Don't die. Dying's bad. Intelligence will follow. Your connection to the fairies lets you know more about magic than most. Dexterity is a little bit low, but it'll get buffed by racial bonuses, and we'll dump strength. We'll replace our only use for that with wisdom almost immediately. For race, you can't be a full fairy and D&D, but you can be their bastard offspring, the elves. Wood elves get plus two dexterity and plus one wisdom, 60 feet of dark vision, fey ancestry for advantage on saving throws, against being charmed, and you can't be put to sleep with magic, which is different than poison, I think. You get the perception skill for free and only have to rest for four hours in a trance where you're still semi-conscious, which you really need if you're playing fairy godmother to your nemesis's daughter. Fleet of foot boosts your speed by five and mask of the wild lets you hide in foliage or precipitation. We're gonna have to build our own background. There really isn't a way for us to get the skills we want like arcana and intimidation so take those for sure call the background either mistress or fallen fey i can't decide on which get it witch she's she's a witch kick things off as a druid you get two skills from their list animal handling and survival are great if you're going to be hanging out in the woods a lot even better if you have to feed a princess you know druidic which is a special natural language for only druids but we're mostly here for spells that's right in addition to turning into animals druids can cast spells Wild, right? Shillelagh lets you use your wisdom modifier instead of strength when attacking with a melee weapon for a minute if you want to smack someone with your staff without investing in strength. Produce Flame produces a flame you can hold in your hand for up to a minute before throwing, dealing 1d8 fire damage as a ranged spell attack. Speaking of fire and being a fairy, have you heard of the spell Entangle? It turns a 20-foot square into difficult terrain. If a creature ends their turn in that space, they need to make a strength save of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and wisdom modifier, or their restraint. That reduces their speed to 0, gives your allies advantage on attacks against them, and they have disadvantage making their attacks and dexterity saves. This lasts for up to a minute depending on your concentration. Wrap your foes in thorns, and then douse them with flames. Oh, and you can take the spell Fairy Fire, which creates a 20-foot cube of green fire that forces dexterity saves, doesn't deal damage. Instead, you get advantage to hit targets inside. Unlike Entangle, one failure gives advantage for the spell's whole minute-long duration, instead of them getting to re-roll it on each of their turns. Try to figure out if your foes are more strong or nimble, and use these spells accordingly. Good Berry creates 10 berries that heal 1 HP, but also provide enough nourishment for one day. You're a single mom out in the woods. This is a better option than Burger King. Finally, Speak with Animals lets you talk to animals for 10 minutes, so you and Diablo can chat. We'll get animal friendships soon. For now, just count on your animal handling skills for a pet raven. Second level druids get Wild Shape, letting you turn into a beast of challenge rating 1 4th or lower that doesn't have a flying or swimming speed as an action. The big plus here is that you gain their physical stats, including the HP of the animal you shape into while holding onto your soft stats. This essentially lets you give yourself a bunch of temporary HP twice per long rest. The downside is you can't cast spells while in this shape. Even spells like Animal Friendship, which lets you force a wisdom saving throw on a beast failing that they're friendly for 24 hours or until an ally attacks them so don't let anybody hurt diablo and he'll stick around you can also pick a druid circle the circle of wildfire came out a couple weeks ago and it's perfect for a druid who just wants to watch the world burn you get extra spells starting with the firebolt cantrip which has a ranged spell attack dealing 1d10 fire damage a slight buff from produce flame you can also summon wildfire by spending one use of your wild shapes this is a small elemental its stat block is listed in the unearthed arcana its proficiency bonus grows with you, it can shoot tiny fireballs that deal 1d6 plus 2 fire damage, and can teleport you and your friends 30 feet as a bonus action, forcing a dexterity save on creatures within 10 feet of the original location, dealing 1d6 plus 2 fire damage to them once per day. 
can man it with your bonus action, otherwise it'll just dodge every round. I would use this instead of wild shapes. Remember, the F in fun stands for fire that burns down the whole town. Third level druids can learn second level spells. From the wildfire list, you get Scorching Ray, which lets you throw out three ranged spell attacks that deal 2d6 fire damage. You can throw these at one enemy or multiple, that's up to you. This doesn't count against the number of spells you know, so grab Spike Growth, creating 20 foot radius on the floor covered in thorns. This area is difficult to rain, and creatures moving through it take 2d4 piercing damage for every five feet they move. The only save for this spell is a perception check to notice it as it camos in with the ground. The DC is the same as your druid DC. Basically, you throw a bunch of d4s on the ground. Monster. Fourth level druids get an ability score improvement. More wisdom will bump your spell DC and shillelagh staff. You can also learn another spell, so bark skin lets you give any creature you touch 16 AC for up to an hour depending on your concentration. You can't get mage armor from this spell list, so use this to deck yourself out with some fancy new digs. Fifth level druids get third level spells. Fireball from the wildfire list creates a 20 foot radius sphere of fire that forces a dexterity save on creatures inside, dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail and half to those that save. That's pretty busted. Plant growth lets you spend an action to make plants grow big and strong in a 100 foot radius sphere, forcing creatures moving through those spaces to use quadruple the standard movement. If you got 8 hours to kill, you could also make all the plants in a half mile radius produce double the food for a year. But, uh, nah. Call lightning creates a storm cloud 100 feet above you, so it has to be used in a room with an open ceiling. You can call down lightning from this cloud to hit creatures in a 5 foot radius with lightning bolts that deal 3d10 lightning damage when they fail a dexterity save or half as much on success. You can do this with an action every turn while the spell is up, and it deals an extra 1d10 damage if it's already stormy. It can be nice to have a little variety in case something is fully immune to fire. 6th level wildfire druids get enhanced bond, letting you add a d8 to any fire damage spells or healing spells you cast, which, uh, you know, we haven't grabbed any of those. You can also cast spells through your little fire familiar, so you can use the fire to make the fire. 7th level druids can learn 4th level spells. From the wildfire list, you get fire shield. Now, is this a shield made of fire or a shield from fire? Yes. You can make a warm shield for resistance to cold damage that deals 2d8 fire damage to creatures that hit you with a melee attack, or a chill shield that does the opposite. Both last for up to 10 minutes and don't require your concentration. Wall of Fire lets you make a wall of fire that's 60 feet long and 20 feet high, or a ringed wall that's 20 feet in diameter. Forces a dexterity save on creatures inside those squares, dealing 5d8 fire damage to creatures that fail or half that succeed, and creatures have to make that save when they're within 10 feet of that wall on the inside or the outside. Up to you. This is our first wall. It's a good wall, but not a great wall. Eighth level druids get an ability score improvement. Cap that wisdom for all the powers of evil. Wait, nature. It can be both. You can also turn into an animal with a flying speed with your wild shapes if you need an HP boost, but I'm just going to recommend the fire elemental. It's kind of the whole point of this subclass, and Wizards of the Coast needs you to test it out. Ninth level druids get fifth level spells, and you may think we have enough fire, but, uh... No, you get Flame Strike from the Wildfire list, but it only deals 8d6 total damage, half of which is Radiant, not Fire, and Fireball does that too, in a similar, debatably better shape. So you have this spell, but just use Fireball. Greater Restoration removes a level of Exhaustion, an effect of Charming, Petrification, a reduction of an Ability Score, a reduction of a total HP, or an Attunement to a Cursed Item, even if you're the one who cursed that item. Whoops. 10th level wildfire druids get flames of life, letting you turn a dead body into some healing energy or more fire. Creatures within 30 feet that interact with the flame heal or take fire damage equal to 2d10 plus your wisdom modifier for up to a minute. You can do this to an amount of corpses equal to your wisdom modifier per long rest. Fire is a great way to get rid of a body, as long as you remember to get the teeth too. Too dark? This is a villain build. Be villainous. 11th level druids can learn 5th level spells. Wall of Thorns is like Wall of Fire, but it deals 7d8 piercing damage instead of fire and slows movement like plant growth as they pass through the thorns, which can be big disencouragement from entering your castle. 12th level druids can grab a feat, and I don't know if you've noticed, but we have a lot of fire damage in this build. The Elemental Adept feat lets you boost this, letting you ignore resistances to fire damage and treat all 1s on damage die as 2s. May you never tire of all your fire. Speaking of, 13th level druids can learn 7th level spells. Firestorm creates 10 cubes that are 10 feet on each side, and you can arrange them as you like. Each just has to have an adjacent side with another cube. Like pretty much every other fire spell, it's a dexterity save. Failing it deals 70. 10 fire damage this time, half on a success. Nice little perk, you can make it not affect plants if you like. So don't worry about busting this out in the woods. 14th level wildfire druids get blazing endurance, meaning that the first time you fall to 0 HP, you actually fall to 1 HP instead, immediately gain 25 temporary hit points, and deal fire damage to creatures of your choice within 30 feet of you, equal to 2d10 plus your druid level. So when you die, they die. And also you don't die. 
15th level druids can learn 8th level spells. Antipathy and Sympathy can force a creature to walk towards an object or a creature of huge or smaller of your choice. Maybe like a spinning wheel. Creatures passing within 60 feet of the object have to make a wisdom saving throw. Failing it, they have to move towards the object and stay there until the spell ends or you end it. You can also use this to push people away and it lasts for 10 days, but it takes an hour to cast. It's a real roller coaster of a spell. Good stuff, bad stuff, kind of situational stuff. Kind of like putting your adopted daughter in a coma. 16th level druids get another ability score improvement. Constitution will help your concentration and HP, so I'd go for that. D8s are kind of meh for hit die. Lean into that con modifier. 7th level druids can learn 9th level spells, meaning it's officially dragon o'clock. Shape change lets you change into any creature of challenge rating below your total level, so adult black dragon is great if you're more into aesthetics, but it uses acid breath, so adult red dragon is more powerful and it uses fire breath, might be a little bit better and mechanically accurate, up to you. You can keep your soft stats, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma, use the physical stats of the creature, similar to when you wild shape, which I know you don't really do, but whatever. You can't change into constructs or undead, and you can't take any legendary or lair actions, which is sad but fair considering you're already incredibly powerful before just having essentially an extra dragon for your enemies to fight. This differs from true polymorph in that you maintain all the abilities you have from your class, including spell casting. So if you just want to get a huge HP boost by shifting into a dragon, then cast all your fire spells with the fire elemental helper, that's an option. Maleficent usually completely blankets the battlefield in fire whenever she's doing her dragon thing, so do that. 18th level druids get timeless body, making you age at one tenth the rate. Considering you're a wood elf, that would make your lifespan somewhere around 10,000 years. That is all of recorded history. You also get beast spells, letting you cast spells while beast shaping that don't require material components, but I'd rather just turn into a dragon and throw fireballs. Maybe that's just me. 19th level druids get an ability score improvement. More charisma will make you more intimidating and is one of the stats that carries over when you shape change, so it's pretty useful. Our capstone is the 20th level of druid, making you an arch druid, meaning that you can cast all spells while wild shaping and you have unlimited wild shapes, which means you pretty much permanently have a fire buddy to burn the whole world down. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you can deal an insane amount of fire damage. With an extra D8 of damage, no one's on the damage die, and you don't have to worry about resistances. Shape change is also huge, considering you can basically make your enemies fight a challenge rating 20 boss before fighting you, and then you still have all that fire damage. Finally, you're great at covering large areas, either containing or eliminating a large number of weaker foes single-handedly. For weaknesses, you're a little too dependent on fire spells. Sure, you can ignore resistances, but you can't ignore immunity, and lots of demons have that. There's also a lot of area of effect spells, which means that they could A, hit you, or B, be dodged with a decent dexterity save by a rogue or a monk. Finally, even though a dragon's concentration is good, you could still lose your ninth level spell really quickly if you fail that concentration save. Thankfully, you have control over fire and thorns to get your vengeance even outside your dragon form. Channel your inner fairy and show everyone the destructive power of the Feywild. Just remember to cover your tracks, otherwise vengeance might be inflicted on you. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We do two builds every week. Join the Patreon if you're feeling generous, and come back next week for a constant good guy and the Senate.